Okay, welcome. Have you ever wanted to know how the aqueous humor works in your eye? Well, you're in luck, because today we're gonna cover everything you need to know about the aqueous humor for USMLE step one. So buckle up. I'm gonna start with this drawing that shows most of the anterior and the posterior chamber. So if you need a little anatomy refresher, feel free to check out the video in the top corner. But as a quick little review, you have the lens, the cornea, the sclera, the ciliary body, and the iris. And new things not covered in the basic anatomy video are the episcleral vessels, the canal of Schlem, the trabecular meshwork, and the angle of the eye. And the angle isn't really important for this video, but it will be important in the glaucoma video. So just know it exists. So the aqueous fluid is made by the epithelium of the ciliary body. So it starts here. Then it travels in front of the lens, then around the iris, back towards the trabecular meshwork, which it passes through, and then enters the canal of Schlem, which takes it to the episcleral vessels, which dumps it back into the systemic circulation. And that accounts for about 90% of the aqueous humor drainage, and the other 10% is drained via the uvea or the sclera. Now, that part isn't super difficult, but the stuff that's really annoying to remember is what can alter this flow. And you know if it's annoying to remember, they're definitely gonna test you on it. So, firstly, we're gonna start at the production of aqueous humor. So we're here at the ciliary epithelium, and we can either increase production or decrease production of aqueous humor. And things that can decrease production of aqueous humor are beta blockers like timolol because they block beta 2, alpha agonists like bromonidine because they agonize alpha 2, and then carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like acetazolamide. And as you can imagine, things that increase production are essentially exactly the opposite. So beta 2 agonists and alpha blockers. Now on the other end, we have things that can increase aqueous humor outflow in one of two ways. One of those things is going to be to increase outflow via the trabecular meshwork, which are essentially anything that can agonize the M3 receptors. So like pilocarpine and carbacol. And two is anything that can increase uvoscleral outflow, which is generally going to be a prostaglandin agonist like latanoprost and bimatoprost. Okay, that's it. Just a real quick video, and now hopefully when someone asks you where the aqueous humor comes from, now you know. And as always, there's going to be a PDF of all this info as well as Anki cards in the description to help you study. See you next time.